Our demonstrator for today is Enid Wood, who has achieved Master Circle status for IAPS, is a signature past member of uh, Pastel Society of America, and has also uh, a signature member of Pastel Society of New Mexico. Enid's track record is interesting and complex. She teaches and plays the violin and viola professionally and has written numerous articles for uh, Pastel Journal as well as other publications and has received numerous awards for her works in many juried shows. Today, Enid will talk to us about her work with icebergs and the challenge challenges inherent therein. Thank you for being here, Enid. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, Pastel Society of New Mexico is so important to me. I found out its existence by reading the back pages of Pastel Journal and I entered a painting in the PSNM show back in 2007. And that was sort of the only painting I painted that year. It took me the whole year to paint the thing and it got in the show. And so there was no way I was gonna miss the opening. So I flew out from Pittsburgh where I was living then and everybody was so friendly that I just kept entering the show. Um, and um, it's such an honor to be um, demonstrating for you today. Um, back in the day when we could still travel, um, my husband and I went to um, Patagonia with some friends who'd retired to Uruguay and had invited us to come for a visit. And they'd been inviting us for 20 years and we finally said yes. And they took us to Patagonia and they took us first on a hike where we saw glaciers and icebergs. And then the next day we went on a boat trip and this um, reference photo that you see on the screen was taken from a boat and the captain of the boat was so proud of himself getting us near the glaciers and the icebergs. And um, last summer I was invited to do a solo show at one of my galleries and it had to be a virtual show, but I couldn't go anywhere um, in 2020. So I just went to my studio and painted gla glaciers and icebergs and did a whole show of them. And when the show was over, I couldn't stop. So I did um, a couple of big iceberg paintings. And one of those is the one that was in your newsletter and was in Southwest Art and perhaps um, sparked this invitation. So um, I was also asked to show about um, pan pastels. And, and um, very few of my paintings in the show were um, with pan pastels, although I used a pan pastel underpainting for um, another painting that was a, a glacier painting. And so I've been practicing um, since I got this invitation on how to paint um, glaciers and icebergs with pan pastel. So, here goes. I'm going to try one of my favorite surfaces and it's UART Dark 500 grit and it's on a board, uh, uh, a really hard eight ply plastic board that I got from um, Dakota. And I discovered these boards at IAPS um, and they're just fabulous for um, pan pastel. And this is 500 grit. I studied with Albert Handel for many years and when we could no longer get Wall Wallace Belgian mist, he told me that UART 500 would be the closest we could get to um, Wallace. And it's, it's close enough, works for me and it isn't quite black. I'll show you, I'll put a mark on it with, um, spruce blue new pastel see that's the new pastel is darker than the black so so this is not quite black it's a really really dark mid-tone and because it's really really dark mid-tone I don't start my 
paintings on it the way that I normally would start a painting, which is with the darks, especially for a demo because you can see it. So I'm going to start um, with a drawing and I'm going to start my drawing with um, a sponge. Um, I, I did a painting, uh, one of my practice paintings, I'll show you. This is one of my practice paintings and I started out with a pencil and um, that was just tighter than I wanted to work. So I did another um, practice painting and I started out with um, a foam sponge and, and that um, was more gestural. So here we go. These are, these are pan pastels and pan pastels come in little pans and they're just pigment pressed into the pans and it feels like cake makeup. Um, my job in college, I had two part-time jobs in college. One was a dishwasher, which was very fun. And the other was um, even more fun and it was applying makeup for stage actors. And so this, this feels kind of like that. And um, the pure colors are along this row here. And these are the tints and these are the shades. They've got some black added to them. These are the extra darks. They've got even more black added to them. And um, they have three different blues in pan pastels. There's the turquoise, there's the phthalo blue, and there's the ultramarine blue. And the phthalo blue veers toward the green and the um, ultramarine blue veers toward the pur purple. And the, um, the phthalo blue, yeah, the phthalo blue veers toward the green. So that's a cool blue, that's a, a warm blue. So it's been really fun to um, figure out how to um, portray that for glaciers. And I put over here um, violet just so that you could see that um, this is closer to the violet than say that. I don't think I'll use any violet. And this is Payne's gray um, and it's a sort of bluish gray. Pan pastel also has what they call a neutral gray, um, wonderful neutrals. Um, so I'm going to start with um, a cool blue because this was um, afternoon light, early afternoon light on a dark and stormy day. And so it was cool light. But um, I'm going to um, use two different cool blues, that and that. And my reference photos, I've, I've got um, one printout in black and white, and I do that printout on an inkjet printer because then I get black or blacks. If I do it on a laser printer, I don't. Um, and then I use my iPad, wake up iPad, for the color because if I, if I print out the color, then I'm dealing with the color of ink and then I get really confused. Um, and this, because it has light shining behind it, gives me the feeling that I'm out looking at this glacier that's got light um, behind it. It's a backlit glacier. So I'm looking for um, big gestures. Um, so there's, there's this big gesture. Um, how do I get the paint in? This is, this is a, a soft tools um, sponge. <laughs> there, you can sort of see it. And I just dip a corner into to the pan pastel. And now I'm going to try to find this. And you can run out of um, run out of pigment, but this is an old sponge, so I've got 
rather a lot of pigment in it from before. And then it's really important to know what you're um, going for when you do a painting. And so what I'm going for, um, what makes me want to paint is color. Letty was talking about this with the, the glaciers and it's, it's the color in the shadows. Can you see that? That's pure ultramarine blue. When I was looking at these glaciers, I thought, ooh, I want to paint these. I have exactly the color in my box. And then there are the turquoises and I have a wonderful turquoise in my box. This is a great American um, and it's called Sock Ray Blue, S-O-C-K-R-A-Y Blue. And it's just an amazing um, turquoise that we'll get to in a minute. But the other thing besides color I like um, in this um, scene is the light, the shape of the light. So I like this little zigzag here. And so I'm going to try to, to um, put that in. And, and those zigzags there. And so that's a, that's a start. So, so let's um, start adding some blues. And I don't know, I, I just feel like I'm starting there because it has such intense colors. So we'll, we'll see what I can get. Because this is an old sponge that I've used for years and these last forever, um, they don't wash terribly well. Um, you can dry them off with a, you can clean them off with a towel, but um, I, I want something absolutely fresh for this. So I'm going to open something new. Um, these soft tools art sponges, they come in many different shapes. Some are shaped kind of like a human fig finger, which is kind of fun. And these are triangles and it's, it's kind of fun. So, so, um, what, what color have I got? I've got, per I've got, um, turquoise. So, oh yeah. Um, I, I like these because they're so quick and gestural and they feel like being a palette knife painter. And now down there, it's a warmer blue. Um, so I can just turn my sponge. I'm leaving that that area right here for my cool blue and I'm going to use a warm blue here. There we go. And the the directions on the past pastels say to um, wipe your sponge across the paint three times and then once across the the painting and that works um, pretty well. Uh, and here, that's a cooler blue. So let me get that um, phthalo blue. So I swiped three times and there we go. Oh, that's so exciting because that's, that's what I had in mind. Um, so it's, it's pretty much instant gratification there, um, which makes me really happy. We can also um, apply pan pastel with um, these wonderful palette knife tools and they've got foam covers on them. And the foam covers come in packets, um, soft covers. And the foam tools come in four different shapes, one, two, three, and four. And the, the ones are, are these, they're round. And when I'm doing portraits in pan pastels, the ones work first because you can cover 
a lot of ground with them. So I'm, I'm going to um, go into one of the extra darks and um, three times and, and um, then use it on its side. And see, that didn't hold as much pigment as, as that. Um, so I'm going to show you a hack. Um, I really like these professional cosmetic wedges. Sometimes there's deluxe ones and they've got too much um, vitamin E and, and lanolin and, 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 and stuff and they won't hold the paint at all. But these are from either Walgreens or my local grocery store. And they come in packets of 32 wedges for $3. And they're really wonderful. And so I'm going to um, try to do that thing. I swiped it three times. And, and there we go. And it's too green. So I'm going to put some um, phthalo blue in it and it's too blue so I'm going to put some green in it and oh I'm starting to get happy and and um, here that's a little bit lighter so I'm looking at um, this little ledge here I also like um, working on my iPad because I can pinch it out And so how much lighter do I want? This is a lot lighter than that. So, but I don't have to be married to this color. I can do one of these and two of these. And there I have a paler blue. It's much paler than I want, but isn't it pretty? So I'll remember that um, for, for this edge here one of these and two of these. Oh, nice. One of these and two of these. And I can use um, the sharp edges of these and they'll, they'll also draw for me. And then it's getting more turquoise there so so I'll just ooh that's fun I'll just add some turquoise and because I'm modifying something that's already there I'm just dipping once into my pigment now okay that that's starting to look um, translucent and that's starting to look exciting and so I want to look at my edge and I want that really, really dark. And so there are different ways that I can go dark. So let me try to show you. This, this tool is one of my favorites. It, it comes with a handle and then um, some heads. And the heads look like, oh, I keep showing it to my webcam and it's not my webcam. I can show it there. See the heads have have little feet, and you just put the little feet into the handle, and then I can see how dark I can go. So I'm going to go for the thalo blue extra dark and the little handle, and see if that's dark enough. Um, it's greener than I want, um, and it's not quite dark enough. So I can go into my pastel sticks. And this is serious because I've, I've misplaced a pastel um, already, but I've, I've, got, I've got another one. I knew I would misplace that one. So this is a, um, this is a spruce blue extra dark new pastel. And it's, it's a very dark blue. And so it can give me some of those shadows. Um, another way I can um, work on those shadows is with um, an, another of my favorite toys, which is 
this giant stick of, um, here we go, uh, of um, Sennelia. And I've got another giant stick of, of Sennelia and it's a nice ultramarine blue. And I can use that, oh, fun. And layer. So now this, this is much, much lighter than, than I want. So what can I do about it? I can, um, take a stick to it. Oh, here we go. Um, this is, uh, a, a Richeson semi-hard pastel, and they're just lovely blending tools, or and they layer over pan pastel really nicely. Um, there's a a texture on this board when you use a, a fairly light stroke that I wasn't sure if I would like for glaciers, but I do. Um, because it gives you the feeling that the snow is melting. Um, and you can get rid of that texture if it bothers you like it does here for me with one of these cosmetic sponges. And so I can just smooth out the texture, yay. Um, so let's go, let's go here to that shape. And I'm wondering if a combination of um, I'm thinking that I want this X, I want this shade of turquoise and this extra dark of phthalo, and let's see if it'll give me what I want. Um, no, it's not got enough turquoise in it. So I can go into three. I can have um, extra dark phthalo, turquoise, and turquoise shade, and does it give me the dark greenish blue I want? No, <laughs> oh dear. So um, the turquoise was too light. So let's go extra dark turquoise. Let's go shade of phthalo. And is it what I want? It's not green enough. Oh, there we go. But it's still not dark enough. So look at this, this extra dark against the um, black paper um, looks like a light. Isn't that interesting? Um, is it the value I want? Hmm. It's close. And let's see if I can make that um, turquoise. So I'm going to put some turquoise on my sponge. Oh, yes. Very nice. And then here, there's something else. Um, let's see if ultramarine extra dark would be what I want um, nearly. Yeah, okay. And, and then here, there's a little piece of light. And do tell me if you can't see something. Um, you can type it into the chat and Marilyn will just say if you can't see something. So here on my reference photo, I really like that light peeking through and I really love that, um, that turquoise color. And so I'm gonna try to go there. Um, and I'm, I'm tempted to show you what just white looks like. I 
I teach painting and, and I'm, I'll, I'm forever forbidding my students to um, use pure white, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I love breaking rules, so let's break this one. I'm gonna go into the pure white. And it doesn't look pure white because there's already some pastel on the surface. And, and now I'm getting a bit lost. I put it in the wrong place. So let's put it where it belongs. Oh yeah. And, and then that's totally, totally wrong. So um, I can get rid of it. My usual tool for getting rid of stuff is a stiff brush. But that's um, too slow for me at the moment, so I'm going to get rid of it with an eraser. And see, it's, it's gone. Yay. So I'll pinch this thing out so that I can really see where I'm going. Oh. Yeah, there we go. And, and now I need a bit of a drawing because I might get lost. So, so I'm going to take a, um, a Conte pencil it's been sharpened on two sides because I'm dyslexic and I put the wrong side into the um, pencil sharpener, but it's forgiven me for it. And now I have a sharp edge on both sides, yay. And then that edge isn't as light as this, so I'll go for um, a darker blue. And get back to my Conte baby blue. And then a Conte dark blue. And then put one of these crevasses in. I love these. And I might as well. Um, go for that. One of my other favorite things is this box that I'm, I'm not sure they st still sell anymore. This is a, a set of unison um, half sticks and it's called Jan's Dark Side. Um, I'd really love to meet Jan because um, I love her pastel choices so much. And, and they've got some lovely dark um, turquoises. So let's see, oh, I'm far too green. So let's kill that with some, some ultramarine. Yay. And now that I've got that um, pencil line, I can, um, this tool is really a precision instrument and I can go right, right up next to it. So let's see if I can show you some stuff with these, um, soft tool 
um, palette knives. If I do go into it three times, I do have enough um, pigment to actually go someplace. And let's try a different um, shape. That was a number one, and this is a number two, and it's a flat. And so I really want that um, edge to look flat. And let's try the ultramarine extra dark three times. Yep. Okay, now, now I need another drawing because now I'm getting into some complexity here that I can't just paint away. I've got to, I've got to draw it. So. There's this edge, great. There's this edge. Okay, now I'm going to tr do some drawing with a, a different tool and it's super fun. I'm going to use the tip of this triangle tool and see if I can draw um, this stuff. Um, I can sort of, but it's really fun. Let's see if I can find another tool that will do a more precise job of it. But that was quick. Um, this, this is my number three tool and it's it's wonderful for both precise work and gestural work. So I'm getting these little pieces of ice that are melting and catching the light. And do you remember what a popsicle used to look like when it was melting, it would get really pale on top. And this ice reminds me of that. So, so that tool is great fun for that. And if I've got um, pastel on it that I don't want, I can wipe it off on my towel and 
go back and get a different color. And let me show you the fourth tool, which is um, the number four, and it's a, a pointy palette knife tool. And I can do some drawing with that. Oh, that, that's just your own fun. This is another of my um, Richardson um, semi-hard castells. And it'll give me really nice edges that I can um, carve, carve out a, a shape with. Um, There, I finally have the color that I wanted, um, that I managed to get enough layers on here. I want now one of these um, soft art sponges. I can use any, I can use any area of the sponge I want, any edge or a flat side. And what I want here is a, a sharp edge. So I want one tint and two turquoises, I think. Now, do I? Um, well, that didn't work. When it had enough paint on it, it did work. Yay. And because, because it's a spongy tool and it, um, and I've got a, a sanded surface that resists me in different ways, it gets the feeling of light because um, there are different um, values and temperatures on that. And this piece of light there, I, I want, but I, I better put the darks in first so you'll be able to see it. Okay. 
Now let's try again with this tool. One turquoise, no, two turquoises and one light. And I just touched um, the sanded paper and it um, gave me the mark that I wanted, just a piece of, of light. And I can make the, the piece of light travel down into the melting ice. There we go. And these little pieces of ice here, let me see if I can show you from my reference photo. Yeah, these interest me. And they're, they're these ones over here. And I'm putting them in with the short edge of, of my sponge with just the turquoise. And now I'm lost. This happens. And I can layer with um, sticks on, on top of what I've got because the pans haven't um, taken all of my tooth. So I've got a, a white new pastel now and I can um, go over that and, and um, put in some highlights. And if that's too white, which it is, I can... Um, take care of that with 
a sponge. Oh, yeah. There, that, that whiteness um, went away. The unison people have a, a really beautiful set of 18 darks. And this one that they call dark 13 is a wonderful purplish blue. That's just great for this crevasse. And one really nice thing about the unisons is that um, they feel so good in the hand, they'll give you exactly the mark you want. And I love how the ice um, has a little bit of light right next to the dark because it's melting. And so I can put that in with the, the soft tools. And I can work on the side. There we go. Okay, I promised you some really vivid turquoises. So um, since this is Pastel Society of New Mexico, we're definitely going to go there. Um, this is the Sacre Blue 
and that sings, but um, the point one, the pure Sacre Blue is gonna um, sing even more, yes. Let's see if I can get a nice edge on that side. And then where would we be without Terry Ludwig? And and I I bought this set of Terry Ludwig um, turquoises, and I think it's sixty of them. So so that's fun. And then um, Sinelli has some lovely turquoises in their half sticks. So, so I'm gonna put a lovely little piece of turquoise there. And tragically, it doesn't look, um, translucent anymore. So I'll just, um, ooh, yeah layer some pan pastel on top of it so that it does. Okay, um, I've given you uh, a start uh, on um, how I'd like to work. I can show you um, one trick in the back with hard pastels and, and pan pastels. Um, here there's a little piece of um, just glacier mess and, and I can Oh, crumbs, that didn't work. Put a white new pastel in. I don't like it at all, but um, I can change it. With a harder pastel over the, the top of it and nice turquoise Sennelier and it's one of those Sennelier half sticks that's all it's so hard and crumbly some people throw those out but but I, I can't bear it so I just when it gets hard and crumbly um, put pan pastel over the top of it Okay, Do, does anybody have any questions, anything that you'd like me to show you? Okay, looks like we have somebody in the chat room. Okay, Enid, how did you get interested in pa painting glaciers? This person asked. I just love color. And so I'd seen um, pictures of glaciers in National Geographic and I, I wanted to see that blue, that turquoise blue, um, that blue. And, and then when I saw the real glaciers, then seeing that blue and the shadows made me really happy. Um, so I, I just took every um, chance I could see to get glaciers. And I grew up in Colorado and we go fishing at um, a lake with St. Mary's Glacier and it was gray, I was so disappointed. <laughs> Um, now I like gray, but I didn't then. It wasn't what I wanted to see. And um, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. There was a glacier on top, but it was gray. So I just slid down the mountain, went back to bed and, and um, never been to Alaska. 
seen some glaciers in Switzerland, but they didn't have that blue color. And then we went to Patagonia and I saw what I'd been looking for. Anybody else have anything they want to ask? Okay, Gary's got a question. Okay, do the soft tips of your tools wear out fast on the sanded surface, the 500 grit? They do on the 400 grit. Um, on the 500 grit, um, not so much. And, and um, if you put enough paint on them, enough pigment on them, then they don't resist so much. So I can show you. Um, so I'll try to get that, that place in and I'll get a fairly newish tool. Um, so I'm going to go into my color just once and put it on there and see that's really tearing it up. But now I'm going to um, follow the directions, not my favorite thing following directions, but I'll do it one, two, three and go in and now it didn't tear it up so much. Lenny wants to know how, um, how do you choose your first set of pan pastels? I, I just went whole hog. I bought the complete set of 80 um, and then they kept adding more. So I kept buying them. They added the um, metallics. So I bought all those and they added the pearlescence and I bought all those. They added the um, colorless blenders. So I bought that. So now I've got everything and I, I really love them. But if you don't want to spend that much money all at once, especially when you don't know if you're gonna like it, um, there's two ways to go. One is the, um, the Zorn palette and it's just five, um, five pans. Um, you can do whole paintings with um, just permanent red, yellow ochre. Sorry, these have been painted on. So there's sort of a mass black and white. And I think they give you some blender. And I've, I've done portraits with those. And I have done landscapes with those, but then the sky turned blue. And so I really miss blue. Um, black and white can sort of make a blue. So, so you can see if you like pan pastels that way with not much expense, or you can buy um, the set of 20, um, they call it basic painting set. The, the pan pastels come in, in towers uh, of like five. And, and um, then you have to screw, unscrew the lids if you want to paint them. And, and I'm too dyslexic and lazy to do that. I would never paint if I had to do that. So luckily, um, they invented these palette trays, either a tray of 10 or a tray of 20. And you can buy, and they have a nice little lid that goes on them. So you can put the lid on and then if the cat walks on your pan pastels and walks on the carpet, you're protected. You can just um, put it in your backpack. I've, I've done um, plein air painting with um, 20 pans, uh, carefully chose a Texas palette and went out painting. I went out with just 20 pens, which fit in my backpack and my colored pencil palette and, and um, a pad of paper and an easel and sunscreen. John asks, have you tried iceberg, have you tired of, no, tried icebergs in water? Have you seen, some, he's seen some amazing colors in those. Yes, um, I, I have a giant iceberg painting that was in your newsletter and is in um, Southwest art of an iceberg on water. And the, um, it's an astonishing color. It looked green, the shadow of the iceberg. 
I should know the physics of it, but I don't. The water was blue, but then when the, I mean, the water was gray, but when it reflected the iceberg, then the shadows were blue and the, the shadow of the iceberg itself was green and it was amazing. So I had a really good time um, painting that and just on the boat, looking at those icebergs, imagining those was um, really fun, trying to decide how I would paint that. And it was really fun um, trying different scale I didn't know if um, these things are massive, you know, the, the glaciers. I didn't know if um, nine by 12, I would feel constrained. Um, I'm, I'm liking this 12 by 16. Uh, I'm liking that translucency. I'm liking the, um, the gesture quality of it. So that's suiting me. And I um, did some um, five by sevens because it was a show and I wanted to sell and I had some frames that would work for five by seven that I bought at a garage sale. So, so those five by sevens um, all sold and not just all sold, but you know how it is when you sell a painting, then everybody wants one. So I did some commissions after that of five, five by sevens. And then the gallery wanted me to give a door prize and I, I wasn't going to give something big away so I did it on a, a a training trading part size and that was so interesting trying to decide what to edit out to make something as massive as an iceberg work at two inches by three inches and that was really fun editing that out yeah uh, Louise wants to know how do you use the colorless blender Oh, I wish I knew. Um, when I use it, it just ruins my painting. And it's really embarrassing when I do it on one of my students' paintings and it ruins theirs. So um, I haven't figured that out yet, sorry. Oh, well, that's fine. And the one, two, three dips uh, that you can use to get color mixed, uh, mix the colors, is that the optical amount of dips or how many dips can you use before you put it on the paper? Um, three is optimal. And um, as you could see that once it goes on it, the paper, you, you aren't stuck with it. Um, so you can either blend on your brush as I did, or you can blend on the canvas. And some people test their colors, but then you've used the color on your test pan and you haven't got it for your painting. And so I don't, I'm pretty intuitive. So I just, um, go for it and hope for the best in um, portraits it can you can get a little bit of mess but having said that it does pen pastel is conducive for portraits and, and quick portraits i don't use their portrait palette i use either their neutrals or the zorn palette and i haven't tried doing a portrait yet in full color. Oh, yes, I have. It wasn't successful, but I will try again. Right. Nancy was going to ask or ask the same question I wanted to know. Do you use the metallic uh, pans in your glaciers? I haven't yet. So the iridescence and the metallics haven't been used yet. Wow. <laughs> um, I, I do have a little snowman painting that I I used the um, the iridescence for snow, and it was um, really um, I like it a lot. Uh -huh. And also, Letty asked, "Have you tried underpainting with the iceberg paintings, or do you just use this almost black uh, paper every time?" Um, the first glacier painting I painted, I was nervous because I thought it would be boring, all those blues. And so I underpainted with um, Gamboge watercolor with a gold on Wallace Belgian Mist. And you're not supposed to um, put wet media on Wallace Belgian Mist, but I did it anyway. And it was really exciting. And then the ultramarine blues really did look purple against that gold and, and it was super fun. Yeah, so 
That was interesting. Yeah. So I want to experiment more with that because physicists have told me that the only colors out there on the glaciers are, are blue because of the blue scattering waves of light and they've explained why and it's gone. But I, I have noticed that you get this full spectrum of color right when that melting ice turns, you can see a rainbow. And I want to put those in sometime, but, but um, it'll take the right painting when I'm feeling um, very daring. Betty says, Enid, I love your enthusiasm and honesty. Thank you so much, she says. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so nice. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not completely in, in love with this, this one. So maybe it needs, um, it's really got some mess in the back. And so maybe what it needs in the back is some iridescence. So shall we try it? Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, when, when I painted this, I put it on a, um, a spare piece of, of you art to give me some padding. Um, sometimes I find that it bounces off just, just um, foam core. Uh, and I can't find that, that piece of paper. So, so I'm gonna have to get another one. <laughs> It's, it's a sheet of 600, but that'll be okay. So I've got a sheet of 600 with a sheet of 500 on top and we're just gonna go quick and quick and dirty. Okay. And, okay, so the pan pastel people um, produce a set of iridescence. You've got here your primary colors, your secondary colors, black coarse, black fine, white, fine, white, coarse. And so we just want to see that um, coarse white and we want to make sure it's white. So I'm going to clean it off with a, a towel so that there's no color in it but white. And put it on there. And oh, it's starting to glitter. Oh, what fun. Okay, and there, there's blue, so let's try the blue. And I really showed you these, um, I call them wands because they're sort of magic and, and they're, oh dear, what are they called? They're soft applicators and you can see those heads and you can see the, the wand with the stick. Okay, and they feel like a paintbrush. They feel really good in your hand. And now I need my reference photo or... Eh, come on. So I went one, two, three. And I am um, improving the painting because I've simplified some of that mess and mud, but um, I'm not, 
I'm not totally in love with what it's giving me from the surface. Nancy asks, could you use these metallics to do the rainbow effect? Um, what a good idea. Okay. Um, Yeah, the painting is better now that it's simplified. So does it need a does it need a rainbow? I'm gonna take that that um, signature away because it, now it's not done anymore. Yay, that makes me happier. Okay. I don't know. I think she meant just a rainbow effect, not necessarily in your iceberg, but yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I can kind of maybe find a um, oh the painting's got better. I was trying to think if there was a place where that effect would help that painting, but I can't think of one. So, so let's get a piece of paper and, and um, play. And Louisa asked, uh, did you say you mount the art in, uh, to a plastic board when you're mounting your- um, No, I just buy, buy the um, pre-mounted boards from Dakota. Okay, so they're already mounted onto a board. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I bought one at IAPS. See that it's um, called UART Dakota Board 8 Ply. And you see it's on this, this um, white plastic. And I thought I ordered two and I got four. Yay, so I get, get to... Um, try some paintings, but let's, let's see if I can get a rainbow. Totally loving it, but you can see. Um, I'll, I'll change cameras so you can see it a, a little better. Well, that's fun. Oh, that's because I knocked the camera down. Okay. Um, what should we do? Yeah, there we go. Ah, how did that happen? It does sing on the black black paper um, that iridescent mm -hmm. paint. And and um now let's put the white course on it. And the black um, course is, is my secret weapon or another secret weapon um, if you need punch. In a see that's that's really very fun. Yeah, you can definitely see a lot of the sparkle there. 
Yeah, because I put it on a fresh sheet of paper. Uh -huh. it, it's, um... Yeah, Betty says, wow. And you, it definitely gives it some punch and some wow to it for sure. Yeah, and, and it, this now has sparkle. Once you get that sparkle in a painting, it never goes away. Um, so, you know, health warning. Right, use it wisely. <laughs> yeah. So, um, not, not sure about that. Okay, and uh, let's get my face back. And any any other questions? Nancy says, "Will it show up under glass? This the metallic or the glitter?" Absolutely. Um, I might be able to find um, a painting with it under glass. So I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you can now now um we've got a camera involved, but you can see it, can't you? Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, you've got just some spots around on it. So this painting was done entirely with pans and sponges except for the the carrot nose was done with a stick and the black was done with soft fine charcoal. Yeah. And it was done on on um, pastel board, and then pastel board is so easy to frame. And and these right. um, what color pastel Dakota boards are really easy to frame. It was gray, right? Which, uh -huh. which really really helped because sure. on the gray, um, if you use your hand pastel very lightly, then you get. Um, light and shadow. See, like I've got there. Mm -hmm. And Marilyn says probably should use the uh, metallics with caution, right? <laughs> Not very. Ab absolutely. And with intention or just with joy. Yeah. John's ask uh, or has advice from the group on a side topic. He wore out the tooth on a small section of Ambersand board trying to get a white highlight that kept getting muddy any tips to repair that to hold the color or oh would yeah it... absolutely so i've got i've got a muddy painting here let's let's go for it okay okay so um so i've, I've got some mud there so so um what i like to do is a stiff brush and so this is just a, a bristle brush um, from Hobby Lobby it's a, a hog bristle brush and um, I can just brush it out and then it'll take it'll take um, a fresh layer of of color. Um, another thing that you can do is a, a terry cloth washcloth and just rub on it and then it'll take um, ah, lost my pen pastels. It'll take a fresh layer of color. And then um, the third thing you can do is get just a, a plain plastic, white plastic eraser. This used to be white and Marilyn you, you, that you can go right back. You can go right back to your surface, and it'll work on on um, 
pass so you can repair that and get some grit back on the, on the board. Yeah, you can get some grit back. And, and the white plastic eraser, you can just, if it's just one highlight that's, that's bothering you, you can just um, use the edges of it to get just that area back. Mm -hmm. And you can take a straight sided razor blade to the eraser and make yourself a point. And, and then you can get back to something that where you're gonna have some tooth and, and can put a highlight on. Oh, there, see that? <laughs> that painting's better now that I didn't have all that, all that paint on that that place. Right. Well, Marilyn says that Ambersand has their gesso in many colors too to match their papers as well as clear. So you can always put a little bit of that gesso, I guess, on a spot and then paint over it. Yeah, yeah. And color fix will do that. Yeah. Fix will do that too, yeah. And Louisa says that try Diane Townsend's dry ground. It comes in a couple of colors and adds tooth back to, and you can paint over it. So wow, you, she's used that. So you might want to try that or other other. Yeah, people. and and Diane Townsend is good at um, getting your tooth back. Um, her Terra Jess pastels, you know the these ones mm -hmm. um, in my travel box, which. Um, I've kicked aside at the moment, so I can't open it up, but the, the white is really great. It's got pumice in it and can go back into, cut back into your tooth and it can cut through dozens of layers to, to give you that highlight. Well, this is great. You've done a, a good job of answering everybody's questions. I think, are there any more people that have a question or a comment? I guess not. <laughs> well, we certainly, oh, here's Betty. Uh, she has a, says, may we, uh, may we see your studio? And Marilyn says, next, next you should go up to Alaska. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can show you my studio. I, I did a little tidying for this, but it really is a mess, but it's got lots of um, kind of pastel paintings. So I'll unplug this webcam. Sure. So the, this, this is um, my, where I keep my pastels. Uh -huh. my, a, a cabinet maker builds um, a flat file. So it's got drawers in it. And then on top of the drawers, um, I've got pastels. So I've got most of my pastels on, on top of that. And I keep my paper there. And um, most of the paintings that are on the wall um, were done with pan pastels. This, this one portrait of my mom, unfortunately, it was a demo done in the dark. Um, so it has problems, but it started in pen pastel and it's on art spectrum color fix smooth. Um, which was designed for past pa pastels and it's got some sticks on it as well. Um, this one was done on UART board. This one was done on UART paper um, with just a few sticks, mostly pan pastels. Um, I've got a desk, desk that Oh, uh, that has a light for still life setups. And this is the messy 
messy part um an entertainment um shelf because those are cheap and they can hold a lot of weight for pastel sets so so there's lots of pastel sets by the, by the window the terry ludwig greens um half sticks of many brands and i did pull pull a working set Oh yeah, that's for right. this painting um, uh -huh. because I practice so much. Like, yeah. I had a working set. Yeah. I don't normally pull um, a palette before I start because that spoils the fun. I I really <laughs> like hunting and packing and finding something and putting it on the surface and having it sing, and then I have a little private party, and that's how I like to paint. Right. Nancy says thank you for the wonderful demo and info. Catherine says, thank you. It was great to see how to work in pan pastel. She's been curious and was admired, admirer of your work for many years. Lynn says, fascinating presentation, thanks. John Despain says, thanks everyone. My first meeting and it was great. <laughs> and Betty says that your, that your studio is not messy at all. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you're my friend for life, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you should have seen it before I tidied it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what is the easel light that you use, Betty? Oh, it's a Richardson Best. Oh, okay, and Lynn says, do you use an air filter in your studio? No, I don't, but my air conditioner has a really good air filter in it, and, and my air conditioner repair person, when he changes the filters, the one over the studio, he says, that was really dirty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's working. It must be, yeah. Okay, well, I guess that's about it. Marilyn asked about our meeting at the museum yet. I have not heard from uh, Lisa, the one that schedules our meeting times. So we hope to eventually be in there at least by September. I'm not sure about next month because like I said, she hasn't mentioned it to me. Um, but I guess uh, that's, all as far as, as Enid goes. Anybody have anything or you can unmute yourselves and ask her a question or whatever. There's, there's one, uh, what is the easel light you use? That's oh, um, it's a trond, T-R-O-N-D. And it's absolutely wonderful. It clips to the easel. It doesn't turn itself into a missile. Um, <laughs> uh, and it it dims. Oh, um, wow! And it's really nice design. It looks like an iPhone. Um, and all I have to do is touch wow. it for two seconds, and then it turns off. And so it's so good that I own two. Um, if I'm in a dark place. Um, painting, then I can have one for my painting, and then an identical one for my pastel box. Oh, good. Yeah. So I don't get myself into color trouble the way I did with my mom's portrait, because you can't see color in the dark. Which one did you say it was? Light. What was the name of the light again? Trond, T-R-O-N-D. Thank you. And I, I got it off Amazon and they're not very expensive. They're sort of $30 each. Oh, 